So today's content framing question asks, what does a deeper exploration of word choices reveal about grandfather's character in grandfather's journey? So today we're going to be looking carefully at the words that Alan Say chooses to use in his book. So today we have two craft questions that we need to answer as well. The first one is why is it important to listen to key words? And the second one is why is grouping related information important? Before we get started with today's lesson, it's review time! So here is our handout to a story elements. This should look familiar because this is part of your classwork from last week. So I just wanted us to go over each part so that we're all on the same page about what is happening in grandfather's journey. But before we get there, I wanted to remind us that these are story elements that we should be reminding ourselves whenever we are reading a fictional text. All right, so the setting of this story takes place in America, Japan, and long ago. We know that the story takes place long ago because there are old-fashioned clothes and people traveling by steamship. So for the character's goal, what does the main character want in the story? Main character being grandfather. We know that grandfather wants to find a place where he is happy. And for the order of events in the story, the plot, first, grandfather leaves Japan to see the world. In the beginning. Next, he travels and settles in San Francisco and brings his wife there where he has a daughter. Then grandfather misses Japan and returns to his native returns to his native country with his wife and daughter. And after that, grandfather grows homesick for California and he tells his grandson many stories, but the war starts and grandfather never is able to return. For the challenges, what makes it hard for the character to get what he wants? We know that grandfather misses the mountains and rivers of both places. In California, grandfather misses his childhood friends and the mountains and rivers of his home. And in Japan, grandfather misses the mountains and rivers of California. Now for a solution. How does the character, grandfather, succeed or not succeed in getting what he wants? Grandfather is able to make many journeys to find a place where he will be happy. He raises songbirds to cheer himself up. He also returns to Japan and he tells his grandson about California, the other home he longs for. And finally, important ideas about grandfather's journey. How do the character's feelings about home and moving affect the events in the story? This is what we talked about last week about how grandfather's feelings about home and moving affect the plot. Grandfather loves traveling, so he explores to America. Then grandfather also loves California, so he builds a home there. Grandfather also feels homesick for his childhood home, so he returns to Japan. And grandfather feels homesick for California, so he tells his grandson stories about California, and the grandson grows up to love both places too, showing that grandfather's feelings about home also affect grand his grandson. Now for comparing two characters' point of view. Last week we talked about grandfather and the narrator, and this was part of your classwork. So... So you see here in this Venn diagram that the orange represents the similarities between the two characters and the light blue represents the differences between grandfather and narrator. So first let's talk about the differences. So grandfather we know wants to see the world. He cannot return to America. He tries cheering himself up by raising songbirds and he shares his love for California with his grandson. While the narrator travels often between Japan and America, is happy that he can have and move between both countries and feels at home in both countries. Now for the similarities. So both the grandfather and the narrator want to be in a home in a place they love. They make their homes in America. They raise daughters in America and they're homesick for one place when in the other. So that's it for our review from last week. Again, if I went too fast so far, please feel free to pause the video and rewatch any parts of the review. All right, so here is your classwork for today. We're going to start with this first activity. 
Directions read the following sentences from grandfather's journey. My grandfather was a young man when he left his home in Japan and went to see the world. He explored North America by train and riverboat and often walked for days on end. Of all the places he visited, he liked California best. So the next part of this YouTube video, our lesson, I am going to replay me reading out loud pages 4 through 14 of Grandfather's Journey for the next two activities. But before we get there, I'm going to keep going. And also, if you want to just reread the book yourself, you totally can. That is why I uploaded under classwork, under materials. You should see Grandfather's Journey by Alan Say, a PDF of all of the pages of the book in PDF format. So you can open that up and read for yourself. Okay? So the question that you need to think about before I get to this read, read aloud portion is, how do pages 4 through 14 differ from the displayed sentences? This question right here. And again, you're going to answer right here in this box. Okay. And so how do those pages in grandfather's journey differ from th these sentences here about my grandfather was a young man when he left his home, he walked on for days on end, and he liked California best. I want you to see the differences. Okay. Now, after answering this question, we are going to go into analyzing the word choices that Alan Say uses at the beginning of his book. So I gave you some examples here. So the word choices that I want you to look carefully at and the bigger question that I want you to think about are the following. So as you're filling out this graphic organizer about Alan Say's word choices, I want you to be thinking about how does grandfather feel about America when he arrives? What words does Alan Say use to describe what grandfather sees? What words does Alan Say use to describe how grandfather feels? What do you notice about the adjectives that describe what grandfather saw? And what do you notice about the verbs that describe how grandfather reacts or reacted to what he saw. All right, now it's time for the rereading of pages four through 13. My grandfather was a young man when he left his home in Japan and went to see the world. He wore European clothes for the first time and began his journey on a steamship. The Pacific Ocean astonished him. For three weeks, he did not see land. When land finally appeared, it was the new world. He explored North America by train and riverboat and often walked for days on end. Deserts with rocks like enormous sculptures amazed him. The endless farm fields reminded him of the ocean he had crossed. Huge cities of factories and tall buildings bewildered and yet excited him. He marveled at the towering mountains and rivers as clear as the sky. So we've talked about how authors are very careful with the words that they choose to use in their text. So I want you to take a look carefully and see how the author Alan Say is describing grandfather. He met many people along the way. He shook hands with black men and white men, with yellow men and red men. 
The more he traveled, the more he longed to see new places and never thought of returning home. Of all the places he visited, he liked California best. He loved the strong sunlight there, the Sierra Mountains, the lonely seacoast. After a time, he returned to his village in Japan to marry his childhood sweetheart. Then he brought his bride to the new country. So now what are key words? So key words are words that are important to the meaning of a text. They focus the listener's attention on important ideas in a text. And so we've kind of talked about this in previous modules in third grade in this curriculum in that <clears throat> we talked about that good readers can understand the main idea of a text by looking at key words or looking at words that are repeated. So how do listeners recognize keywords? Well, keywords are repeated, often repeated in a text. And sometimes a reader uses a special voice to draw attention to keywords. So certain words may be emphasized, right? We're looking and or we're listening more like uh, when a reader slows down during a certain part of the text, that usually means that the reader is emphasizing that part of the text. Why? Because it may be a key word or a key idea. And so your next activity is going to be analyzing repetition in grandfather's journey. And it's similar to the graphic organizer that you just completed up there. But now I want you to look at repeated words throughout the text. So here you have the option of going back to a previous lesson and listening to my read aloud again and following along in the book in the YouTube video. Or you can just go directly to the PDF of the whole book and kind of flip through the pages to see what words Alan Say repeats over and over again, how those words explain grandfather's feelings and how those words explain his actions okay because again the skills that we are practicing are understanding the an analysis or analyzing the repeated words that the author uses to help us understand the important ideas in a text and i hope that as you are completing today's classwork you are thinking about, hmm, what does this remind me of a skill that we've talked about when we come to the end of really analyzing and understanding a text? What do we learn about what the author is trying to teach us? And so I hope that is kind of like the question in the back of our heads as we complete today's classwork. All right, so first I wanna say sorry about the quality of this video on accident, Ms. Toma recorded this on time lapse instead of just a regular video on the phone so it may be a little laggy or lagging so please bear with me but yes so this is the last part that i'm going to just show you you don't have to write anything but i wanted to show you an example of a model compare and contrast essay however if you have an ela workbook with you at home please feel free to annotate and follow along So here I have two different colors, similar to the colors that you saw in the beginning of this video for the review. So the yellow or orangish yellow represents the compare. So the compare is the similarities. And in this compare and contrast essay, it's showing us the similarities and differences between Japan and the United States. So I'm representing the similarities with this orangish yellow color and the blue I'm representing the differences, the contrast. So I'm also annotating at the top like we do in class. Um, compare is to show how things are similar and contrast is to show how things are different. And so we're going to see um, in relation to our second craft question of why and how um, grouping related information together is important. And so we're going to be looking at this four paragraph essay um, because it is going to be your first focusing question task. 
So, the narrator's grandfather in Grandfather's Journey by Alan Say is a man who wanted to see the world. Um, here in this first sentence, we don't see any similarities or differences just yet, so we are going to continue to read on. Oh, also, if I didn't mention, we are highlighting with these two highlighters on the side. Um, he went to live in the United States. Grandfather loved it there, but one day he decided to go back to Japan. There were many things that were similar between the United States and Japan. There were also many things that were different. So you see here in our introduction paragraph, we have our title of our book. We have our author's name. We are kind of describing the overall plot of what's happening to grandfather or where he's going throughout the text. And in the last two sentences, we are stating the main idea or the topic of our essay. We're stating that there are similarities and differences between the two countries. So we're kind of giving the reader a heads up as what the introduction paragraph should do to our essay. All right. So the first body paragraph states, one thing that was similar is that Japan and the United States both have mountains and rivers. Aha. So that word similar tells us that this sentence is sim shows us similarities between the two countries. When grandfather was in California, he missed the mountains and rivers in Japan. Similarly, when grandfather was in Japan, he missed the mountains and rivers in California. Grandfather loved both places. So we see here the word both and the linking word similarly tells us that this paragraph includes all information about the similarities. Okay, so that's why I highlighted, highlighted the whole paragraph, that yellow highlighter. Now moving on to our third paragraph or our second body paragraph. Again, looking at the linking words carefully, even though there were many things that were alike. So that word or those words, even though, tells us that we are having some kind of contrast. We are having a differing point. There were also many things that were different. Again, there's that word different. So we know that that sentence includes of showing how things are different. When grandfather lived in California, he lived in a big city and wore European clothes. However, linking word that shows a difference, in Japan, he lived in a small village and wore a kimono. A kimono, again, is a traditional Japanese clothing. When grandfather was in California, he met many people. On the other hand, when he was in Japan, he saw the old friends that he missed. Again, on the other hand, however, linking words that we've talked about before, and those linking words show us that there is a difference in a statement, okay? And so we can highlight this entire paragraph blue because all the sentences in this paragraph relate to the differences between the two countries. So I should be highlighting this paragraph in just a moment. Let's just wait a little. I'm probably making some great points that um, are lost. <laughs> Alrighty, there we go. And finally, our concluding paragraph. So this is just going to wrap up the paper or the essay. Grandfather loved both the United States and Japan. He wanted to return to the United States one day, but he never did. Just like how the end of the book also states this, the end of this paragraph is also restating the end of our text. And so here you have a model compare and contrast essay. Um, because again, this is an exemplar or an example of what you will be writing for your first focusing question task essay for this module. All right, that is it for today. I hope that you were able to catch everything. Please make sure that you uh, leave comments in the Google Classroom if you have any questions about today's lesson. Please don't forget to finish your exit ticket as well as your classwork. Thank you.